Thank God it's Sunday! Oh, Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year, everyone! Happy New Year, Paul! It, it is the first day of 2023, and I hope that you are excited about what God has in store for us. Again, welcome everyone to Lightcast Worship Celebration, and we are so glad that you are here today. But before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us, help us to recognize you above all else. This is an incredible day. Thank you for new beginnings. Thank you for making all things new as another year begins. Help us to live each day for you. Help us to remember that the gift of Christ, Emmanuel, is our great, greatest treasure not just as Christmas, but for the whole year through. Fill us with, joy, with your joy and peace of your spirit. Direct our hearts and minds towards you. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you are still with us. For you never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives that we can be assured your heart is towards us. Your eyes are over us and your ears are open to our prayers. Today, we humble ourselves asking you, Lord, to search our hearts. Forgive us, Lord. Purify our hearts and wash us by your precious blood. We pray that this new year will be focused on healing ourselves through repentance and renewing our minds. Let your spirit and power breathe in us, through us, and again fresh and new. Bless our service and our speaker today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now let's all stand up and let's worship the Lord through music. the 
11 to 13 says, Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and all the people in his faithfulness.
Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Let's sing that one more time, church. With a thousand hallelujahs, we magnify your name. You alone deserve the glory. forever yours a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more a thousand hallelujahs and a thousand Lord God, Lord, we just want to worship you, Lord God, this new year, Lord Father. Lord, we begin this new year, Lord God, by rejoicing with gladness, Lord God, in our hearts, Lord Father. Lord, you are our all-knowing God, Lord, our ever-present Father, Lord, and our God whose mercies and love for us, Lord God, never fail, Lord God, that even, Lord Father, the highest heaven, Lord God, cannot contain you, Lord God because you are just so great and so magnificent, Lord Father. And we want to honor you, Lord God, today. We want to give you the glory, Lord, because we love you, Lord God. And we know, Lord Father, that you deserve it all, Lord God. Lord, we humble our hearts today, Father. Be with your messenger, Lord God. Grant him words of wisdom, Lord God, and words of truth, Lord God, that will teach us today, Lord God, these truths, Father, that we pray, Lord, will transform us, Lord God, through the work of your spirit, Lord God. Lord, we love you, Lord God. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Uh, let's sit down. Our exhortation verse for today is Malachi 3, verse 10. It says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that there will not be room enough to receive it. Amen. When we think of worship, our minds often turns to music and songs that we sing together every Sunday. Yet there is much more to worship than the music. The two of the most important elements of worship are in our prayers and in our giving. We pray for tithes and offerings because as believers, we should pray that God will be at work in all we do. Our financial offerings and our prayers go hand in hand as our prayers and prayers and praises are in themselves an offering to God. We also pray for humility and compassion as we give. Giving is vital because it helps support the local church ministries and missions and outreach initiatives. When we give back to God, we are expressing our trust in Him and in His provision. So church, are you ready to give to the Lord? So let's stand up and sing praises for our offering. to you good measure press down shake it together and running over give and it will come back to you when you give give to the lord give and it will come back to you good measure press down shake it together Oh 
tithes and our offerings. Father God, you are the giver of all good things, and your word makes clear that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We give freely and not from our compulsion, for there is nothing we could give that matches your glory and majesty. And that great gift of your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, which guides us daily, all we have is yours. Accept these gifts, offering, and tithes, Panginoon, and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's remain standing for our scripture reading. Romans 8, 28, verse 30. Let's begin. And we know that for those who love God, to those who are called according to a purpose, for those also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. He who so called this and whom he justified, him he also glorified. And amen. Thank you for the reading of the word. And now let's welcome our speaker for this morning, our handsome Pastor Ronald Ramirez. <laughs> Can you say that with me? Seize the victory. There you go. All right. So, um, some of you, um, what? Is, anybody remembers the our theme for 2022? Breakthrough. Yeah. There you go. Breakthrough. Right. So, and 2022. Now it's 2023. Right. Parang kahapon lang, no? <laughs> it's just it's as if the 2022 was just yesterday. But here's the thing. Some of us actually, you know, um, there's a lot of you actually in a, in, here in church actually who had experienced breakthroughs. And there are some that actually cannot wait for 2022, 2022 to be through. Right? <laughs> because you have more challenges and there are like, you know, things that have been painful in the year 2022, but here's the thing. As we face 2023, here's, here's still, you know, what is right. That our God, whom we serve, whom we believe in, whom we trust, whom we entrusted everything um, with, you know, that our God, he is faithful and true. He doesn't change. That is his name, right? That's the meaning of the name of the Lord God, faithful and true. Actually, the the... Um, in the name of God, when we when we look at, uh, I mean, not the name, the, the when you have Elohim, right? Part of that is Allah. That's El Alaim, right? So if you are going to the singular form is Eloah, and the the the, the plural form is um, Elohim, right? I am in Hebrew is uh, plural, and actually it's not dual. There's like singular, dual, and plural, right? So there's already in the name. The way that the Lord God is called in Hebrew, there's already the, the clue that God, you know, that God is a trinity. You know, our God is a, um, one God, but in three persons. So the Allah um, there in the middle, the meaning of that is faithful and true. El is all-powerful one. That's the meaning of that. Now, all right, so, so how do we face 2023? Right? How do we move forward? And, you know, and as a matter of fact, 
do you know that I am a, <laughs> Michelle saw me earlier this morning and I was deep in contemplation. I, asked, I was actually doing my devotion, right? And um, I woke up a little bit late, you know, today, right? And um, because it's New Year. <laughs> and, and so while we were, well, 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 uh, well she, so she saw my face and then she asked me, you know, um, sharply she asked me, um, so you're not, you're, um, you're not prepared for the message yet? Because she saw my face. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually good. But I'm already like, you know, I'm already worried about 2023. You know why? Because I have not really put out plainly what's the plan for the church for the whole year. I don't have that yet. So I need to really like, uh, and like you know, and uh, for me, at, at the start of the year, there's like, you know, I already have like the general plot of what we're going to do in the year. But there's a lot of changes again. You know, I'm not so used to that. So I was like, the, you know, and, and I was like thinking afterwards, you know, in my mind, you know, I was like telling Ronald, addict ka talaga. You know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're addicted because that, that's the way there are times that we are looking, we are getting overwhelmed. And some of you are looking back, you know, and said, oh, oh thank the Lord God, it's already 2023. But you know what? This demarcation line is artificial. Do you know that's like, you know, um, how many days are there in a year? How many? 365 and one-fourth. You forget that. There's always a one-fourth. So this is not really exactly, you know, a year. Right? Are you getting this? There's spare time there. But here's, here's what's, what I know. Right? That our God goes beyond time. God goes beyond place right god goes beyond a lot of things so how do we how do we look forward to 2023 so what are we what are we going to do i remember in 20 in uh, 2019 right 2019 and there are like people who were posting on 2019 and even like pastors and i'm even one of that because 2020 you know how we we actually like correlate 2020 with the like you know brighter you know or uh uh, bright vision, it's like that, that you can see clearly. And so a lot of people actually struggled during 2019, and they were saying that, they were saying that they cannot wait for 2019 to be done because 2020 is going to be a great year. Lo and behold, right, January, we saw the news, right? And I, st I still remember January 8th when I posted that on my Facebook. When I saw that people were falling, Right, um, they're in line, and somebody would fall, you know, literally fall in line, right, dead. And then you saw that the ones who were picking them up were wearing a uh, um, hazmat suits. And I was saying this is not this is not regular, right? For people to actually, so these guys in in, in Asia they know something that we don't, because they're already wearing the now we call them PPEs during the time they're hazmats, right? That's what we call them, and. After a while, so I went home to the Philippines. I went to Colombia, right? Then went on to then went on to the Philippines. And some of you actually um, know that I almost got locked down, right? And uh, just in the nick of time, I was able to go back. And uh, when I got here, that was like the that was Friday, and then the last Sunday, the last Sunday that uh, we can actually uh, worship together. And I, I actually declared that for the other. People in the church are going to join us online. Remember that? You remember that? We didn't have anything yet. It's like, uh, I think there were like two phones that uh, launched it in Facebook Live. You remember that? And um, Pastor Joel Berona, who was with us during that time, he, didn't, he wasn't able to come because I said only the leaders will come to church. Yeah? Only the leaders will come to church, the primary leaders and the pastors. And Pastor Joel wasn't able. If they were about to leave the house, then he collapsed. And apparently he already has COVID. You know, and then last year, 2022, right? And people were saying, uh, it's, it's like a repeat 2022. <laughs> so, and now that we are here and, you know, it's like, a, uh, what you call that? Those who are in history and all that, they say that it would, for us to really fully recover, it's going to take us around four to five years. But let me tell you, right? Things will never go back to where it was before. Are you hearing me? You know, you know, so, and here's the thing. I was talking with my boys 
when we were in, in Toronto, right? And I was, you know, with the advancement of technology and all, who would think? I said I could never even imagine how the world is going to be stopped by a virus. And of course, this is only my opinion. I'm not saying that this is true. I believe this is a virus that was, that was experimented in a laboratory. It leaked. Right? It leaked. And since the ones who started having this, they hid the, the details, right? Because there were countries who were asking for, you know, a sample of that when it was already um, at the start of it, particularly Australia. And they were not given the, any info. And you know what happened to Australia? And it's, it's good that Australia and New Zealand were able to handle it very well. Mm. In spite of, you know, in the Philippines, you know, that uh, we had lots of deaths too. But can you imagine, you know, the Filipinos with the, uh, we were late in the game, but there's not a lot of debt compared to what we have here. And just thinking that we are the United States of America and we had a lot, lots of, of debts here in the States. And you know what, what, that's, what does it tell us, right? One particular thing, that we are not really in control. Hmm. But praise the Lord God, because He is in control. So how do I face 2023, right? So I can, can have this confidence in looking forward when I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And actually today, as I open the, you know, it, 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 it's really, you know, not a good thing to, to open your, your Facebook before you preach, right? So this morning, I actually was also affected because I have two friends who were rushed in the hospital, right? And I have a... And one of my uh, best friends in Bible school, we were praying for his mom. His mom finally was taken by the Lord today. And I was like, are you, are you looking forward? It's like we say Happy New Year. But then the situations that you are seeing, you know. And, I, and last night was one of my, uh, uh, what you call that? One of my lamest um, New Year celebration in my entire stay here in the States. Right? Why? Because my wife is sick. And you know what they say? It, I know, it, it's true. You know, if I get sick, it's all right. But when my, my wife is sick, we're not. <laughs> right? And, and, and so she was sick. And I thank the Lord God for those who sent food this weekend. For those who had not sent any, right? I received cash. <laughs> right? But, but uh, I, again, our sponsor last night was the Javier's. Hmm? So we had spaghetti. Hmm? Lumpiang Shanghai. Hmm? And uh, what else? Um, chicken curry. Hmm? And then imaginary lechon. Uh, right? Sent to us by, right? Um, a, a picture was sent to us by, by the, our beloved Archbishop. <laughs> right? So in all this, looking forward, some of us are like, you know, some of us are like, ah, this is positive, and then I'm going to go have that positive energy. And some of us are actually, ah, no, this is going to be like, no. And here it is, you know. Um, the reality is, the reality is, if we are going to go in the scriptures, we, you and I, we are in a fallen world. Things will go wrong. And looking forward in the world that we, are, that we are in, this world is not going to be better. The utopian world that everyone is actually, you know, trying to, trying to, uh, to aim for, right? And, uh, and, you know, there's so much money in the world today. Do you know? Right? And it's amazing. Do you know that there's around, around uh, I think, 28 Millionaires are made every month in the United States of America. 28 millionaires. Right? And there are, there are, you know, the, before it's very rare that we hear billionaires. Now it's, you know, it's dime a dozen if you're going like, to look at how many billionaires there are in the world. And we even have Filipinos who are billionaires now. But here's the thing. There's still so much poverty in the world. There's so much heartaches. There's so much, you know, there's food. Can you imagine with this amount of money that we have in the entire world, there's still world hunger? 
Why is there hunger in the world? Why? Because the issue, the issue is not, are not all these things. The issue is not all these things. The issue is the heart of man. The issue is the heart of man. Right? And, uh, and so, again, for, to start the year, the title of our message again is hashtag heart check. Right? And uh, for you who have been with us for quite a while, Right? You know, that that's where we go. So how do I go confidently moving forward? Right? Romans 8.28, it says there, For we know. Right? And let's go to the Lord in prayer first. Lord God, we come to you. Speak to our hearts. Help us again, Lord God, to look forward, Lord God, in hope. And again, Lord, I pray that you're going, Lord, to again, that we are going, Lord, to trust you and to trust everything, Lord God, into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right? So, when we talk about, so in Romans chapter 8, that's, that's when it says in verse 28, that was, that's why it said, for we know, right? And it says, this is something that is innate in you and me. It is inside you. This is intuitive. You know. Nobody has to tell it to you because somehow the Holy Spirit is the one that is speaking to your heart. Now, let's go to verse 18. Right, just to um, to to, uh, to to put it all together. Why did um, Paul talk about in verse twenty-eight that that way? Because in verse eighteen, listen. For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes, there's suffering in this world, but it is no match. It's comparable to the glory that is waiting for you and for me, for those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do, are you listening? Right? And look at what the Lord God says here now in verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. And what's, what's, what's this? This is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where we all are going to be revealed. Right? So here in verse 20. Why? Because for the creation was subjected to futility. In verse 20. Not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. You know what's the problem with, with labor pains? How many of you here gave birth already? <laughs> All right. Joe Boy just raised his hand. How, so let me ask you, how painful is it? <laughs> and um, so let's ask, you know, Nanay Luning. Masakit nai. Right? Nanay Susan, when you gave birth, right? The pain, when is it the most painful? You still remember? 150 years ago? Kailan na eh? Mas, mas matindi siya bago nung nag-uumpisa pa o nung mga anak na? Nung lalabas ni baby? Na bago nung bumas yung baby. Are you getting this? Before the baby gets out, it becomes more intense. Are you getting this? The same way that the, world, the, world of, the word of the Lord God is telling us and giving us that. That when we, when, when the labor pangs, Right? The whole world is there. But of course, so now when, when, when Erwin, right, finally, that's the, he's the, the eldest, diba? It's Erwin. So when Erwin got out, did you still remember the pain? Where was, where was your mind? Yeah. Are you getting this? You know, she forgot about her own pain because... Of the joy that the baby came out. And I remember the, 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 the same way with us, right? And when, um, when Joe Boy was born, Michelle had to um, really wanted to, born, uh, to give birth naturally. So we waited. And the, doc the, 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 the doctor finally decided to do a CS on her because she started having fever. Right? Um, during the time. She became feverish. So that means that there might be an infection somewhere. And I still remember that Zoboy's heartbeat was, uh, was going down. 
right? And, uh, you know, the, but, you know, I was relaxing and all that. And I still remember that um, during the time. And uh, um, after, after we gave birth to Joboy, that's when I realized what he, why he cannot get out. Because his head was this big. <laughs> right? And then you could see that he has a big head and Michelle was tiny during the time. And well, the, um, with Ichi, she also had a hard time, but she delivered naturally. With Mayumi, she had, you know, really, really a uh, very, very hard time, you know, giving birth, right? And, and all that. It's not, so giving birth was not easy, but every time, you know, every time. And I still remember with Mayumi, she gripped my hand so hard. Right? It was, I never felt her grip that much all throughout, my li- all throughout our married life. And she gripped it so hard. You know, I had like to pull back. And I was like, ah. You know, and, like, and I, I still remember um, Ate Medi's uh, younger daughter, um, Lenlen, was with us in the room. And she was laughing at me. And then I told her, sub, sub. And then she held Michelle's hand. And she too was screaming <laughs> in pain afterwards. Right? Why? Because labor pain is not a joke. It's not a joke, but here's actually what is really wonderful when she, when the baby finally comes out, right? When the, the baby finally comes out, everything is forgotten. I still remember when Joe Boy went, um, came out, so I was the first one who held Joe Boy. The nurse gave him to me, and then I gave him to Michelle. And our pastora, right now, she cried. She cried, you know, she cried, and, and she was asking, why is my son so ugly? You know, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right. So she cried just the sheer joy of holding now, that which she had carried for nine months, for nine months. And then when she, when, 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 when and she saw him, then, you know, she, she hugged him, and then afterwards she handed him over to me again. So I took Zoboy. You know what happened? Like, count to ten, she's already sleeping. Right, she was groggy and all that. What's the point? The same way, life will always be sending us pain. When the Lord Jesus Christ finally, when the Lord Jesus Christ finally comes, right? So when will this all end? When the Lord Jesus Christ finally comes, again, the glory that is awaiting us, right, is incomparable. Hmm. Now, right, let's go, right, not, and it says there, it's not only those who are not believers of the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 23, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we're not spared. We're not spared. So, you know, and um, the resistance against what we call the prosperity gospel, you know, it says, you know, the health, wealth, and prosperity, you and I are still going to get sick. The Lord God will provide for all our needs, but it doesn't mean that we are not going to have problems financially. Right? We are going to have these challenges. We are going to have health challenges. In our relationships, there will be challenges. So, but then in verse 25, look at what it says. Uh, sorry, in verse 24 it says, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. So number one, right? So how do I go forward? Number one, remember who you are. Remember who you are. In verse 26, look at what it says. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession. So that's the Holy Spirit. And He says that even in our groans, in our moans, the Holy Spirit can speak. He's our actually built-in translator for us. He intercedes for us. Right? And then it says in verse 27, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Who is the best intercessor? Who could best translate the moans and the groans of our hearts? Right? That's the Holy Spirit. So that's the confidence that I have because I belong to God. Right? Because I am in the Lord Jesus Christ. And Christ is in me. But better yet, because the Holy Spirit is in me right so remember who you are who you belong to right and and the next thing is that remember who god is remember what he had done and remember what he can do remember for a believer in the lord jesus christ the best is always yet to come 
right? And of course, we're looking forward to heaven. But while you are here on earth, Psalm 23, verse 5, Truly goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Right? So that gives me the confidence. Right? And there are times again, you know, that the first thing that comes is that we are afraid of what the future holds for us. But listen up. Right? And of course, that during that talk, and Michelle was like looking at me, our pastor was like looking at me, and, 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 and she was like saying that. And then I told her, you know, I, you know, with that, I don't really worry. And I told her, listen to the sermon today. Because the confidence again, it's not just in the things that I can do, but the confidence is because the God whom I serve, He is faithful and true. He is faithful and true. It doesn't mean that I will be spared from the pains of life, but when I face the pains in life, right, the Lord God is with me. The Lord God is with me. And then that's why He said, because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And everything that is happening to us, nothing. Nothing will be wasted by the Lord God. And now, does it make sense now? Why he says in verse 28, For we, no, right? All things work together for good. The good things. The bad things. Right? Your joys. Your pains. Your successes. Your failures. The Lord God says, He makes all these things. Are they necessarily good things? No. Right? And um, some of you might have heard this illustration already. How many of you, how many of you here love to bake? There you go. Right? Some you, li you like to bake. Oh, God likes to bake, huh? All right? So, um, Kyle, you also bake? Mm, yeah. And you know, that's one of the, our pastor's dream to actually have a uh, panaderia, a bakery mm. that will feature the best hot pandesal in Queens, mm. right? Uh, with, uh, um, with the good butter best, <laughs> right? So, Kyle, what do you bake? Desserts? Can you give me one particular? Crinkle cookies. Wow. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it delicious? I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but what are the, when you do crinkle cookies, what flavor? Whoa. Pandan. You do pandan, huh? Wow. Yeah, so when you do, let's, let's go basic. Yeah, um, the, the chocolate, which is more familiar. With the chocolate um, crinkle cookies, what are the ingredients that you put in there? Eggs, milk, cream cheese, chocolate. What, what, what kind of chocolate do you use? Dark chocolate. Mm. Do you use the bar? Yeah, okay. Flour and cake mix. All right. So you see all these this ingredients. And so Kyle will mix them together. Right. And of course, and then mold them. And then put them, put them on a pan with a, you use a wax paper or whatever. Right. But there are pans now that they say that you don't need wax paper or whatever, you know. So you put it on, you put it there, you mold them, and then put them in the oven. Right. And then when it comes out, there's the crinkle cookies. And then, of course, you put on, what's that? What do you call that? Yeah, powdered sugar, right, and all that. Wow, right? Can you make pandan? <laughs> My mind is already there. Now, here, right, you know. And all of them separate, can you eat them one on, 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 their, on its own? Right? Just for example, can you eat uh, can you eat dark chocolate? I would. Karen just when she heard chocolate, you see Karen, kanina, ganun mukha ni Karen. When she heard chocolate, she lit up, you know. Yeah, happy New Year. 
<laughs> so, and, 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 and what else? You know, so yeah, I'll, some of you will not, um, don't like um, dark chocolate. I like dark chocolate, right? And, uh, but some of you would, uh, would, uh, would eat the, the powdered sugar. That's nice, you know. But would you eat the flour on its own? Right? Would you eat the cake mix on its own? Yeah, somehow, right? But just imagine, and you are eating this stuff. There's like, a, you know, they, not all of this, they taste, they taste good. I'm not saying that they are bad things, but here's actually the illustration. Then Kael puts them all together, bakes them, and creates the greatest or the best product that he could produce. So that it can be eaten well. Are you getting this? Right? So after all these processes, right, when it comes out, there you go. Chocolate crinkles. But I like pandan more. I really want to taste that. Right? It's in my mind now. You know how you have the last song syndrome? And here's, I'm imagining the, the pandan, right? And all that. What's the point? The same way when the Lord God said, for we know that all things work together for good. Why? God makes them, molds them, you know, forms them, molds them, bakes them. So that, he says, that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who love God. To those who are called according to His purpose. Amen? Right? You are called according to God's purpose. Now the question is, do you love God? Do you love God? That's actually the greatest question that we have. Now, right? And, and that's going to be in our conclusion. But here, look at verse 29. It says there that you who are called according to God's purpose, in verse 29, for whom he foreknew. Right? Now that you are saved, that you have committed yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ, now you understand that you were foreknown by God. Right? Number two, he said there that you are also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Right? Your life design is to conform to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be Christ-like. You know, some of you, you know that I, I, you know, I love Elvis Presley. Right? And um, I still remember that. I have an ID scan. I am no lion. I would have, uh, you know, I had an ID when I was in grade two, and somebody stole it. Somebody who had a crush on me stole it from our family album. And, uh, and uh, how did I know? She told me when we were already grown up. Right? The way I smiled in that picture is I was going sideways. Yeah, at grade two, I was like, hey, wow, I couldn't, couldn't believe that. You know, until high school, I'm seeing that picture. But here's, here's the thing. I was like, you know, because I want, because, you know, Elvis was really a great performer. He's a great singer. And he's even a, in a karate black belt and all that. I want to be like him, you know, growing up. And, and, there, and for those who are in basketball, there's like, you know, who said, uh, there's that line that be like Mike. Right, during our time, you know, and our posters are like Michael Jordan in our rooms. And eventually, there's like, you know, peep, kids who are going to play, and they will go, Kobe. Even when, some, you know, when, when boys actually uh, um, get in their dirty underwear and then um, shooting it in the hamper, they will go, Kobe. Right? And just imagine that here, the Lord God is telling us that the Lord God is making us conform. Is there anyone better than us to emulate than the Lord Jesus Christ? himself right. Right. the Lord God wants us he says that you were predestined for what to conform to the image of his son that's one of the benefits that the Lord God had given us in our salvation remember again whose you are right and then he says there so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren then in verse 30 moreover whom he predestined this he also called whom he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also glorified. Right? So in all this, you know, it's going to take us a whole sermon in order to explain all this. But just two, two things there. It says to justified, the meaning of that, that all your sins, there's no more condemnation. You were free from the penalty of sin. But then one day, this glorified, 
Right? We are positionally glorified, lifted up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Positionally, we are. But, I mean, um, positionally in the Lord God, but again, uh, but again, uh, practically we're not. And here's what the Lord God is telling us. We're looking forward to that. And the Lord God is going to save us from the presence of sin. And this is going to be in heaven. Right? This is going to be in heaven. Right? A bonus there in verse 31. In verse 31 uh, to verse, verse 35, there are seven questions that were asked there. Right? There were seven questions that were asked there. Now, and going down, right, it says there, now in, a, in verse 37, it says that we are more than conquerors, right? And in verse 38 and verse 39, there are six areas that were given to us there. So seven questions, I'm not going to like uh, put it down. You, that's in your scriptures, you have to you just look into it and then uh, look at the confidence that we have. This is because of who we are. And number two, it's because of who we are in whose we are, right? Who you are in God, who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, now look at verse 35. Right? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? The meaning of this, this is different from verse, 30, verse, uh, uh, verse 39. The meaning of this, does this mean because I'm into this stuff that the Lord God does not love me anymore? There's a point there. Did this separate me from the, the Christ loving me? Does that mean that I'm not loved by Christ? What are this? Look at what it says. Shall trouble, distress, persecution? Right? And I was like a... It reminded me to, um, I think that was yesterday or today, the, in our, in ODB, you know, about the persecution of Paul. And it reminded me, do you know, I was um, watching National Geographic and it, they featured about the spread of Christianity in Rome. Do you know what spread Christianity, what was like the impetus in order for Christianity to spread in Rome? You know what it is? Persecution. They were relatively, during the time, they were relatively unknown. But the emperors got, uh, what do you call that, got threatened because they are so loyal. Because in, the, in, in ancient Rome, right, during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, the emperor is considered a god. Right? So during the time. And so uh, they got threatened and so they started doing this. But look at what the Lord God says. And because of this persecution, Christianity spread. And look at what it says. Famine. Mm. Right? I, 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 can I ask anybody here, have you ever experienced that you had not eaten three, at least once in a day? Not intentionally, eh? but because there's nothing to eat. Have you ever experienced that? I don't think so. Right? And here, nakedness. Hmm. Um, I know among our women, there's the tendency to say, oh, wala ko maisuot. I have nothing to wear, <laughs> right? And, uh, and then you see, open the, the cabinet, right? Some of them even have tags, right? Who can relate, right? Husbands, come on, right? <laughs> right, and here, or peril, risk, danger to life, then sword, right? And look at what it says in verse 30, it says, it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, the Lord God says, you are more than a conqueror. Right? You are an overcomer. Now, come on. Right? Come on, overcomers again. Yep. Now, let's close this. There are six different, you know, situations or, uh, you know, for lack of a better term. But, you know, that's like, you know that surround you that could actually feel that this is encroaching on you trying to do its best in order in order to trip you right that these are the things that might make you afraid these are the things that we fear right and then look at what it says for I am persuaded so number one remember who you are and remember who you are in God. 
Now, in verse 38, look at what it says. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life. Some of you fear death. Some of you fear that you're going to live a long life. You know? Nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers. Right? These are, again, you know, these are um, angels and demons. Right? Principalities and powers. There's like the, the spiritual powers there and there's also the earthly powers. Nor things present. Nor things to come. Some, some of you are afraid because, you know, it's hard to move on. Or you, that's the question that you have. How can I move on? Right? And just like, you know, again, the 2022 to 2023. Oh, how I wish the 22. Uh, how, I cannot wait for 2022 to be done. And now you're in 2023, but you're still scared of what's going to happen in the future. Some of you are afraid, you know, what you, are you going to do this year? Right? Some of you, uh, there's like two words that came out recently among, you know, among our young people. YOLO. You only live once. Diba? And so some people are actually like doing like a lot of crazy stuff because YOLO. Um, actually, there's another term for that. Yo loco, loco. <laughs> right? And there's, the, there's another word that became popular. FOMO. What's FOMO? My? You don't know? No? FOMO is a fear of missing out. You know? Our kids are a lot of stress and duress. Right? And look, and, uh, and maybe some of you, you're not, you're not, you know, a millennial or a, a next gen, but you are in that situation. It's not, you know, not just because, and some of you are already like thinking, you know, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things that you already miss out. You don't want to miss more. And it says here, nor things present, nor things to come. When it comes to time, not height nor depth. Just talking about some of you that we are looking for our proper places in this world. That you're trying to find meaning, you're trying to find purpose, right, in the things that you do. Some of you are actually like thinking, should I quit my job? Should I retire? Some of you are there, right? So some of you are, am I going to start a business and all that, right? Or am I going to stop my business there? Some of you regarding your relationship, am I going to continue? Is this still, this will still, will this still work, right? Some of you are actually in just the general way that life treats you right tell you again life many times is unfair of course that's the one life with a small l because the capital l is the lord jesus christ right life at times you know and many times right, is unfair but i really like you know that God's grace is more than enough. Mm. It's always sufficient for you and for me. That's a, a paraphrase from, from Yen Yen Wan Wan. The first time I heard that was from our dear Yen Yen. When she gave her testimony uh, during the time that she was diagnosed to have cancer. Right? But praise the Lord God, she, she got out of it. Right? It was during the time that she also started leading her cell group, right? And she got out of it. We had a scare recently, and it's amazing what this young lady had gone through. But I praise the Lord God for her heart to continue serving the Lord. And now one of her greatest joy, because during the time, you know, one of her prayers is that her parents are going to become more faithful, you know, in the Lord. And praise the Lord God in 2022, right? Her parents became leaders. Yep. Then we had another scare, right? She, she, she sent a message to me and, and Pastora that uh, um, they found another lump, right, in her, in her throat. And, and this was a week before our, uh, two weeks before our retreat. But praise the Lord God, when the results came out, it's benign. Yep, yep. And this is what, you know, um, what's, be, what's after benign? <laughs> you know, but we thank the Lord God that our Lord God is never beaten, right? He's always there. And look at what the Lord God says here. He says, nor any other creature or created thing, right? He says that nothing 
shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can you read with me that last part? Shall be able, ready? Begin. Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And let me go back again. That question, do you love God? And this is a question that not your wife, not your husband, right? And one of the things that somehow I'm happy to hear, right, for so many years, because somebody, when people describe me, and they will describe me this way, oh, he loves the scriptures. <laughs> he loves the Bible. Right? And um, I, I enjoy that, hearing that. You know, but one of the things that actually, like, left me for, for a while, and, and I was wondering, because there's something else that I want to hear. And that is to hear that Pastor Ron loves God. And I was like, for a long time, that I never heard that. Never. I was never described that way. But praise the Lord God, in, year, in 2022, Three times that somebody actually introduced me that way. Right? Um, here's Pastor Ron. Oh, he loves God. And tell you, when I heard that, my heart jumped. And I pray, you know, not just because the people are recognizing that, because I really want to live my life that way, that I am a lover of God. Our last batch for, um, for life class, right? Your, your name is, uh, your batch name is what? Theophilus, right? Lover of God. Come on, Theophilus. Come on. Yep. Yep. But. What? I, I think because there's. We mga Theophilus batch lahat absent. Except for K. For K and. Uh, Meron mga Theophilus batch na nandita. Except for K and, uh, and KL. Alright. But here's the thing. Right? Now, how do I love God? Number one, right, so here's the key. How do I love God? And it says there, for we know all things work together for good to those who love God. Again, there's a qualifier there. It's not for everyone. It's only for those who love God. So how do I love God? Right? Rick Warren actually said this to a young man who was, having, who was struggling with that, that I cannot love God enough. He says, that is not really your problem. Your first problem is because you don't understand how God loves you how much god loves you so how do i how do i grow in knowing the love of god be in god's word it never changes cast cell group appointment with god daily sunday celebration training right and last but not least you know in, in loving god the lord god says so we understand the love of god and then our love for god is a response and what does the lord god say right if you love me Keep my commandment. And here's a commandment that I give unto you. It is not really new, but it's new. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ, how he put it there. And First John, all right, all throughout outlined it. And what is that? Love one another. Right? In your cell group, in your cell group, right? Your cell group is the, the closest unit that you can ever have. This is your home. This is your spiritual home, your cell group. Right? This, for those who are not in cell group, this is not yet your, this is like a, a big extended family. Right? But this is not really your spiritual home. So join a cell group. Right? So in your cell group, love one another. Mm. Right? Take your, your leader. Right? Take your leader. Your she, he's, your, he's your shepherd. Love him. Love her. Support him. Support her. Right? And for those who are leaders, I know. Right, you have in your group, there's an EGR, extra grace required. <laughs> you have people in your group, right? And you are thinking, you, know, you might be thinking, ah, oh, Lord, why can't you make this person transfer to Sister Emily? They're going to much better. Mm. Right, the Lord God gave them to you. So love them. Right, the Lord God is telling you, love one another. You know why? Because the love of God is made perfect or complete in you when we 
love one another. Right? So, uh, last but not the least, so this 2023, it never changes. We will continue loving God. Right? We are going to grow in loving God. We are going to grow deeper in loving God. Are you with me? Amen. Right? And then we are in that growing in God's love, we are going to grow in loving one another. It's going to get better as we learn, as we love, and then in loving others who are not in the Lord Jesus Christ yet. We are going to bring more souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Did you hear that the world is going into be a lot more pain? To be in a lot more pain? The labor pains? You know, the labor pangs? You know, people are looking for hope. You and I have that. So how do I move? How do I go forward in 2023? It never changes. Right? It never changes. Let your confidence be right in whose you are. Then be confident in who you are in Him. Right? So how do I move forward? It never changes. You go back to square one. Hashtag heart check. Love God, love others. Right? And that's our message for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. Because, Lord God, even before, Lord, that we had recognized, Lord God, your voice. Lord, that you sought, Lord God, for us. And you didn't even, Lord, love us, Lord God, with just mere words. You sent your only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, Lord God, the confidence that we have is because when you gave the Lord Jesus Christ, you had given to us, Lord God, you have given, Lord God, your best. And I pray, Lord God, as we move forward, help us, Lord, to have that confidence, Lord God, in you and you alone. To go forward, Lord God, and to fulfill the task that you had given us. Lord God, and that we are going to be assured, Lord God, for what you said in your word, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to your purpose. For whom he did for you, he had predestined to conform to the image of his only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord God, today, as we continue, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that we will remember again, Lord God, Lord, that we will always go back, Lord God, to square one, and that is to check our heart, to understand your love more, to respond in kind, and to share it all around. Lord, we lift you up and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. God bless you. Darkest eyes, you are close. 
close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been for worshiping with us today. I hope you are blessed. And we will see you again next Sunday. For our announcement, no training this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so our training will resume on January 8th. Amen. Woo and of course, we have our prayer done. Tuesday to Friday at 5 a.m. <laughs> By a Zoom. So cell group leaders, please rally your team to join and let's pray together before we start of the, of the day. Cell groups. Church is not about building, but about building lives together. So we do that through our spiritual homes. It happens every Sunday now after service. Amen. Yeah. Again, Happy New Year to everyone. So, Happy New Year. So, let's call Pastor Ron for our benediction.
Right, so we are, sorry, we are starting uh, um, the, the curriculum um, um, this month is actually about prayer and fasting, right? So uh, we're still plotting out because we are going to have our Plan 40 in place. For the Plan 40, it's going to be open. So after our training, we're going to go to uh, Plan 40. In our Plan 40, it's going to be open to, uh, to the, those who are already attending our cell groups regularly. All right? So again, we are looking forward to that. And um, um, sorry, um, January 14. Right, January 14 is the joint worship rally of uh, GBA, um, Queens, Long Island, and um, Brooklyn Hub. Right, it's going to be done in um, QBC, right, in Queens Bible Church. That's going to be on Saturday. So please attend. Right, so family, on daming wala sa announcement. Ah. The <laughs> oh yeah, I know, I know, Ate Ellen. You're like, sino ba nag-prepare nung script na yan, ha? Alright, so, right, Jomar. Ha? Ikaw, ikaw, tawag dito, vacation si Kersi, dapat ikaw yan. Alright, so, and then, ano, overtime yung vacation. Okay, so, um, um, January 21 is our, uh, is our Every Family for Jesus retreat. Okay, so, encourage those that are in your every family for Jesus to attend our retreat. Okay? All right. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Lord, thank you for another year that you had added, Lord God, into our lives. As we continue celebrating and having, Lord God, enjoying, Lord God, our break with our family, be with us, Lord God. And now, unto you is able to do, Lord God, exceedingly abundantly above everything that we, Lord God, think or imagine according to your power that is at work within us in your church and in Christ. Jesus be all the glory now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 Happy New Year. God bless you. is for it.